Hi everybody, Augie Kennedy here, and welcome back to Super Awesome Calculus. This is chapter three, which is entitled Differentiation Rules! Yeah! So, chapter three, uh, we talked last time about uh, the product rules and the quotient rules, which are two very, very important rules that you'll need for calculus. So right now, we can work with just about any polynomial. We can differentiate just about every polynomial, almost all of them, and we can uh, differentiate the exponential function. But we can't differentiate the trig functions quite yet, and that's what we'll be doing today. Before that, though, let's go over the big problem from last time. Last time, the, the question that I put to you was uh, differentiate the following function f of x equals x over the quantity x plus the subquantity c over x. So, let's write this out. f of x equals x over x plus c over x. Now, I don't believe that you can work with this quite yet as it is. You may be able to, but it will probably be fairly difficult at this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this little problem right here, the c over x, by multiplying everything else by x. So by multiplying x times x, x times x, and c times x, we can get rid of that subquotient, which means that f of x is also x squared over x squared plus c. And now we have a very simple quotient rule problem that we can solve. So let's work with this. Here we go, we're going to rewrite it in the nice way. f of x equals x squared over x squared plus c. And we're going to call f to be the top and g to be the bottom. So we remember the quotient rule, which is g times f prime minus f times g prime over g squared. Let's do it. g f prime x equals g x squared plus c times f prime, which is the derivative of x squared is 2x, minus, we'll make that a quantity, minus g, or f, which is x squared, times g prime, just 2x, over x squared plus c squared, and like I said, I'm just going to call that g, g squared. So f prime x, we multiply through and expand, we get 2x cubed, plus 2xc minus 2x cubed over g squared. And, we've, and we realize that the 2x cubes are going to cancel. So the answer, the derivative of that function, equals 2xc over x squared plus c, that quantity, squared. And that is how to differentiate this, x over x plus c over x. There you go. I hope, you're, uh, I hope you found that somewhat useful. Remember, when we're working with c, c could be any number. You're going to treat it like a number. Um, but what you, what you may want to do, if that's, if that's a little troubling, is go ahead and just pick an arbitrary value for c not one, I mean you could use one, but pick something like five or ten and just see what happens to the final number and you'll be able to realize the relationship between C and the end answer. So that's the big problem and now we're ready to go over today's lesson which is all about the derivatives of trigonometric functions. Now, the book very, very elaborately and very, very elegantly explains how to prove that the derivative of sine is what it is 
and the derivative of cosine is what it is. The book does a great job at doing that. I, however, am not going to do that because it would take me entirely too much time. So instead we're going to look at it kind of intuitively. Our question is, what is the derivative of sine x? Okay, that's our question. Well, let's look at sine x. Here we go. Here we got pi over 2. We got pi. We know that sine x is going to peak there. It's going to drop off here. Then at 3 pi halves, it's going to be down here. 3 pi halves. And then at 2 pi, it's going to be back up to 0. And we know that the same is basically, or is true, over on this side. So we'll call this negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi halves. That's uh, roughly what f of x equals sine x looks like. Now if you remember last time uh, in chapter 2, we talked a little bit about what the graphic meaning, uh, the graphical meaning of a derivative is. And we talked about how you can, you can draw little tangent lines everywhere and find out what the slopes are and calculate them. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's calculate, let's draw some tangent lines. Let's draw one there. Let's draw one here. Let's draw one at, let's draw one at zero. Pi over two, let's draw a tangent line right here at pi. Let's draw one at negative pi, three pi halves. And on the negative side as well, let's draw one at negative pi over two, negative pi, negative three pi halves. We've got tangent lines now. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to plot them on a graph. At zero, it looks almost like that tangent line against the sine curve is the line y equals x, which has a slope of 1. So let's go ahead and let's make this number up here 1, just like this is 1. This is negative 1. That's 1. That's negative 1. At 0, it looks like the derivative is 1. Now, as we move closer to pi over 2, we notice that the derivative starts to flatten out. And at pi over 2, we notice that the derivative, that the line, the tangent line looks to be horizontal, which means it has a derivative of zero. So we know that there's a point right there. We know that at pi, it looks like the derivative is the line y equals negative x, which has a slope of negative one. So let's go ahead and put a point there. And then we notice that three pi halves, once again, we're back at zero. And at 2 pi, well, we're back to 1. And we notice that the same is true on the other side. At negative pi halves, we have a horizontal line. Tangent slope of, uh, the tangent line has a slope of 0. We notice that at negative pi, we've got a slope of negative 1. Negative 3 pi halves, we've got a slope of 0. And negative 2 pi, we're back to a slope of 1. Now, let's go ahead and let's draw just straight lines through. Boom. Boom. Right? Well, it's kind of hard to draw straight lines because I know what this is supposed to look like. Hmm. You can see that looks a little, a little bit almost like this. And if we can realize that the curves gradually slope, we can redraw this graph right here to look like this, or something like this. And that, of course, is the graph of cosine. So what we've just seen is that graphically, the derivative of the tangent lines all over sine x seem to take the shape of cosine x. And as you might have inferred, that is in fact the case. And that's as far as I'm going to go in proving that uh, 
f of x if f of x is sine x, f prime x equals cosine x. Okay? Now, if we were to look at the graph of cosine x, let's go ahead and do that very quickly. I realize this isn't a great in-depth proof, and for you rigorous math heads, you'll be very, uh, very upset with me, but sorry, time constraints. Here is cosine x. One. There we go. I'm just going to go over this one really quickly. Okay. There's a rough graph of f of x equals cosine x. I'm not going to mark down the actual points, but because I don't think we need to. We did that last time. I'm just going to ask you to trust me that I've probably written, I, this is basically the shape of cosine x. So let's draw a tangent line right at the uh, intercept there. Let's draw one right at the x-axis intercept there, right down here at the minimum, right up here, 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 and here. Hi Kenny, have a seat on the stairs really quick. So we can see that the tangent lines over cosine of x are zero at the origin, which is right here. We can see that they're negative one as we go over here to pi over two. And we can basically see, if we keep this up, that we're going to be looking at a function that looks very much like the negative of the sine function. And in fact, the derivative of cosine of x is exactly that. It's the negative sine function. So, that expands our knowledge of the derivatives by 1. So now, we already know that the derivative of sine is the cosine. And we know now that the derivative of the cosine is the negative sine. Okay? So there's one more uh, function that we're going to examine right here, and it's the tangent function. And we're not going to examine this one graphically like we did sine and cosine. Instead, we're going to use the quotient rule to go over how to figure it out. f of x equals tan x. I never like to use tangents. I don't like working with cosecants, secants, cotangents, any of these things. I like to work with sine and cosine, and when you're trying to evaluate tangent as a function, the best thing to do is to look at it in terms of sine and cosine. As you probably remember from trigonometry, tangent is nothing other than the sine of x over the cosine of x. So, with that in mind, we can apply the quotient rule. And you remember the quotient rule. We take g times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator over the denominator squared. Let's go ahead and do it. f prime x equals the denominator, cosine x, times the derivative of the numerator, sine x. We know that the derivative of sine is cosine. So we have cosine squared x minus the, um, the numerator, sine x, times the derivative of the denominator which is uh, negative hold on, cosine x times blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's right that's right minus sine x times negative sine x over the denominator squared which is cosine squared x and we can see right here, we can see what's happening. We can see that we've got f prime x equals cosine squared x minus or plus sine squared x over cosine squared x. But you remember, or you may remember from your trigonomic, uh, trigonometric identities that cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. 
So the derivative is f prime x equals 1 over cosine squared x. You can see we took cosine squared x plus sine squared x, we isolated the numerator, and we realized from trig class back in the day that 1 equals cosine squared plus sine squared. Now 1 over cosine squared x is the same as secant squared x, because you remember that the, the secant is nothing other than 1 over cosine. So, the derivative of tangent is secant squared x. Now, let's go ahead and let's write out all of the derivatives of the trigonometric functions. We now know, here's f of x, here's f prime x. We know that sine, its derivative is cosine. We know that cosine, its derivative is negative sine. We know that tangent, its derivative is secant squared. Now, with the, the opposite functions, the, the uh, reciprocal functions, we know that cosecant, you're going to be looking at negative cosecant x times cotangent x. You can prove all of these with the quotient rule if you like. These are the three we'll be using in the course. The next three you may want to know if you want. Secant x is secant x tangent x. We'll explore this one a lot more when we talk about integration. That actually turns out to be fairly important. And cotangent x turns out to be negative cosecant squared. So those are, that's our table of trigonometric functions, and that's basically all that we have to go over to, uh, for this chapter. So that leads us to the big problem. Today, I ask you, for what values of x does the graph f of x equals x plus 2 sine x have a horizontal tangent? For a hint with this, you might want to remember how we proved what the derivative of sine and cosine actually were. And if you remember that, you'll probably be able to figure out the answer to this question. All right, well, thank you very much, and uh, I'll see you next time on Super Awesome Calculus. Take care.